Welcome to our podcast about fatigue, risk management. Uh, we all know what sleep deprivation feels like after a poor night's sleep. Uh, we just don't have the motivation. We're not as alert as we normally should be. can be very challenging to stay awake. It can become very easy to get bored. So my name is Kristi Arispa. I'm the head of industrial marketing. And we have Tuomas Kaleva here with us today, who is going to talk about his master's thesis, which was completed for August Ramsey Foundation and If Insurance on fatigue. So first, welcome on your first, I say congratulations, actually, on thank your you. recent graduation. Thank you. That's and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you here. So what made you select this topic for your thesis? When I first noticed that this subject was available on our faculty email, I noticed that this topic was something that is not maybe that widely talked about uh, in the area of occupational safety and risk management. And I realized that this topic is one of those human factors that is definitely worth looking into more. And I think it's important to do research also on a well-known topic such as fatigue, because these kind of concepts that are familiar to everyone might be actually overlooked in occupational safety and risk management. Interesting. And how did you conduct your research? I conducted it with an interview study that, or as an interview study, uh, which consisted of a literature review as the theoretical background and then semi-structured interviews, uh, which were done with um, seven of If Insurance's client companies and then um, two, two experts that are part of If Insurance's stakeholders. Right, and how would you define, after this research, how would you define fatigue? Well, I think there is no clear definition about fatigue yet. It might be due to the fact that it, it has a lot of individual variation to it, but I think the best fit for a definition would be a reduced mental or physical uh, state of alertness, and which then creates, let's say, a decrease in these areas of and performance-wise. And acute fatigue is actually something that usually occurs when you sleep one or two nights poorly. But then the acute fatigue can, can be formed as uh, chronic after you sleep poorly or have a poor quality sleep. That should be mentioned as well as uh, several nights. Let's say, for example, after a night shift week. So that's some area where you can uh, notice the fatigue becoming chronic. So you mentioned night shift and you mentioned poor sleep, poor sleep quality. What are the most common causes for fatigue? Well, the most common cause is insufficient sleep. Um, usually less than eight hours, hours per night. And of course, poor quality sleep. But it can be largely attributed to the timing of, of sleep within the normal circadian rhythm. And to lifestyle factors also, such as substance abuse, mm, obesity, inactivity, or some other diseases that affect your alertness or sleeping quality. And common work stress factors uh, contributing to fatigue are shift work, um, especially the night shift work, but also the three shift work, um, cycle, um, then irregular and long working hours, one major contributing factor, um, travel work. And then if the job has a lot of monotony, uh, time pressure and constant alertness and vigilance demands, those are areas that we can really see that attribute to the fatigue uh, for some other reason than the sleep itself. Um, psychosocial overload also has an impact to fatigue, uh, such as constant interruptions and processing a lot of information in the task at hand that is known to break the concentration which is usually normally between 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. that you can stay concentrated like very very good but also the psychosocial underload which is usually overlooked as, as one factor because monotony and boredom impairs alertness and attentiveness okay very interesting so what are the symptoms that come out when you ha are fatigued uh, there are many symptoms because there are many individuals of course but what is usually usually uh, true for most of us are slow reaction time, uh, reduced eye movements, 
blurred vision. That is one one very serious serious one. Um, then reduced coordination, and motor skills, especially on the road, that is very very dangerous. Then you can have memory problems, concentration problems. Um, then increased risk taking, and maybe a loss in situational awareness and judgment. One one interesting for me was that it can be also seen as reduced motivation. Very interesting. And you mentioned increased risk taking, slow reaction time. Can you talk about that a bit more? Yes. Well, a, a fatigued person um, usually uh, is more neglectful uh, to perceived risks, which can lead to abnormal safety behavior. For example, in situations where there's some uncommon disturbance in the production, then this intuitive risk assessment can be overlooked totally. That you just do and go on autopilot mode. And then the slower reaction time. Fatigued person can be can be um, especially dangerous on the road, of course, but there also exist some jobs where you ha- have to have good reactions and motor skills to be able to react to a potential hazard, for example, or object, such as like people walking in front of you. Right, so it's very important to take fatigue into account. Uh, I think it is because it can be a direct or indirect risk factor leading to or enabling the accident itself. And the role of human errors seemed quite significant in the literature review and also came up a lot in the interviews. Fatigue should be more more manage, managed and more can be done to actually look into um, behind these human factors and human errors, such as if there is a lot of loss of concentration, disturbances in your vigilance, why is that? And then we can really dig into the reasons. Is it fatigue? And why is this person fatigued? And it's a major risk, especially in uh, safety critical industries, for example, maritime transport, uh, air traffic control, process control, and heavy transport. But what I really want to say is that in the light of the figures, fatigue can be considered as a significant risk factor. And the stats show that on average, um, a fatigued person has like 62% higher risk of an accident. And I think that is a very alarming figure. And according to different different statistics, it's usually between 5 to 25% of accidents that have fatigued as a a major factor behind the consequence. Mm. Right, so you spoke with several different companies and, and during your study, is fatigue currently considered to be a major risk factor? Uh, partly is and partly no. And this is because everyone agreed that fatigue is indeed dangerous and can be dangerous. But then uh, not so much was done to actually manage it. So it wa- it was maybe handled in a way that it is so normal in your everyday life that it doesn't require that much attention. might be also that it's not seen as a risk worthy of action because everyone thinks that it's it just has to do with sleep and that's something you do on your individual time. But there are actually a lot to be done in the workplace as well to get people being more attentive and vigilant and well in general uh, be more alert at work. So how can companies prepare for, react to fatigue in the workplace? Is it possible that we can see fatigue playing a role behind accidents, incidents? Firstly, when I did the literature review and the interviews, there was a lot of common ground on handling fatigue as any other risk factor there are in the workplace and increasing the knowledge about fatigue itself and its effects. And this is indeed the starting point to managing fatigue. The knowledge increase involves, for example, um, integrating fatigue as a theme to safety talks and onboarding also to the whole introduction process for a new recruit. And having close cooperation with occupational health care is, is all also important and utilizing their expertise on how to handle it. And occupational health care is especially important, I think, when you dig into deep, deeper individual factors, not so much as the work-related factors. They can also help in with that as well, of course, 
But then when it comes to the individual health, they can really find good solutions how to decrease fatigue. It's in- important to analyze the root causes for every safety deviation because that way it, that way it is possible to recognize certain factors that indicate fatigue's role or possible role um, behind the occurrence. And some factors indicating that would be if there are a lot of human errors behind the incident, such as you haven't reacted ap- appropriately to a situation, you had problems with vigilance or focus memory, or you, your safety be- behavior was abnormal. That is one indicator as well. Or maybe there was some underlying medications that could have also caused these problems. But I think what should be asked after um, errors in in your performance should be that how many hours has the person actually slept? Did he or she have any consecutive night shifts before the incident? Uh, did it happen during the morning, morning shift or early in the morning? And was there enough recovery time from the uh, job being done? like from the previous day? Was there some non-ergonomic shifts or shift changes before the occurrence? And by identifying these, we can really uh, dig into the countermeasures. For example, by reducing the non-ergonomic shift changes or minimizing any consecutive night shifts and making changes to the possible shift rotations in general. Mm. So was there anything in this research that surprised you? First of all, I, I would have thought that fatigue might be leading factor behind an accident, maybe in one or two percent of the cases, but instead it was considerably higher. And also the fact that managing fatigue is not a given in today's occupational safety and health was a bit surprising. I thought that it might be more more managed there. It is really only managed in the most critical industries. And fatigue seems to be rarely considered during accidents occurring in the workplace. Uh, but rather commonly investigated in traffic accidents. Which is, I think it is weird considering the fact that as dangerous task as driving exists in some jobs as well. And the role of technology helping in identifying them and measuring fatigue or controlling human errors, monitoring human behavior, that was quite small, which I thought would have a bigger role and impact nowadays. So that surprised me. So what are your thoughts? What can companies today do to tackle fatigue? I would say preparing for fatigue management and tackling fatigue can be done with the traditional risk management model, uh, where you first first identify the critical tasks you are doing in the company that are like in general risky or considered as risky. And usually accidents tend to happen and have major consequences. So that is the first step. Uh, then you should gather data for analysis such as the physical and psychosocial uh, workload factors that are um, true to that job being handled and any previous accident investigations and current close call reports are a good source of information. And these help determine uh, whether a lot of fatigue related factors and fatigue contributing factors are part of uh, specific jobs. Then after that it's possible to recognize dangerous situations what can happen to whom and when can this happen? Um, after these phases, a risk assessment is is usually the next step and to uh, generate countermeasures. When you know what the causes were, then you can control them and control the risk and implement the uh, risk-taking actions. But from the interviews and the literature review, uh, some simple countermeasures to prevent fatigue were For example, rotating the most demanding tasks uh, to control any monotony effects. So your your brain can basically breathe and when it's given a new task, um, you stay more alert and it doesn't get as boring. (laughs) Let's say it like that. And then controlling overtime and overworking hours, which is dictated mainly by the law, obviously, but then that you should really, really take a look at that that if someone does a lot of overtime, it shouldn't be always the same same person because that generates cumulative fatigue. And then monitoring the employee's working ability. Technology can be a huge help in this. And also stepping in if someone very fatigued is starting a risky task. That is very important. And I think it, sh- it cannot be emphasized too much. 
like if someone is really 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 tired and starting to do something uh, risky then you can go and stop stop the person from doing it then say for example take a break or i can do that if you can do it as well although fatigue is rarely the only or the most significant part behind accident accident or accidents it should be better considered in current risk management and occupational safety management uh, given the knowledge of its effects and we already have knowledge that what works against it as well and by limiting this one factor and factors that contribute to fatigue in general uh, we can already prevent some of the damage caused by human errors because every incident prevented is is important and managing fatigue doesn't only improve of course safety but also the quality and efficiency of the work performed which creates competitive advantage for the company in general so it is important for every organization very interesting and lots of great topics there everything from sleep deprivation to shift work so i'm sure we will be doing a lot of conversations on these in the future so thank you very much for speaking with us Tuomas Kalava and thank you to our listeners and have a safe day thanks again thank you Kristen